Yes. Good morning, everybody. It is kind of an interesting day. So we've known, well, we've suspected for a really long time that I have sleep apnea. Um, only recently did we do an overnight test and found out that not only do I have sleep apnea, but I probably have like a super severe sleep apnea. So we are going to a doctor's appointment today to get that all sorted out. But first, a little bit of fun. So like I said, we've been suspecting that I have sleep apnea for a while. Um, biggest a while indicators. For <laughs> so basically, if you don't know what sleep apnea is, or obstructive sleep apnea more specifically, it's where um, typically a, a part of your throat closes off while you're trying to breathe while you're sleeping, um, and basically you stop breathing, and your brain wakes up partially because it's not getting enough oxygen, and basically you spasm or, uh, or move in some way, allowing the air to move freely again. Anytime that you stop breathing or your oxygen goes below a certain percentage, uh, your blood oxygen goes below a certain percentage, or um, you, know, you have anything abnormal in your sleep pattern, uh, they call that an event. Normal is they want to see less than four or five events an hour. Um, that's pretty regular. I have 58 an hour on average. So yeah, I have a few more than they want me to. Um, one a minute. <laughs> one a minute. And, uh, and the majority of the night I slept with my oxygen below 90%. Basically my heart rate was all over the place and nighttime is the time that your heart is supposed to be on autopilot, smooth and steady, and getting its rest by just doing repeated uh, things that it's comfortable with, not doing anything out of the ordinary. So my heart is having to work extremely hard, way harder than it's supposed to, which puts me at risk of heart problems, but also it has been extremely difficult to lose weight, uh, and that's kind of a cycle that you get into with apnea, is that apnea makes it harder to lose the weight because your body isn't going through a full rest cycle at night, and the more weight you gain, the worse the apnea can get. So just this downward spiral. So there's been the heart problems and the weight gain that have been difficult, but also my body's not resting, so I'm tired all the time. I fall asleep instantly when I lay down, and I sleep for as long as I can, and then I wake up the next day, and I'm still tired. No matter what, no matter how long I sleep, I'm still tired, uh, and I wake up, wake up way too many times throughout the night. So I'm excited for this doctor's appointment because uh, the pulmonologist is going to figure out a treatment path. Uh, I don't care if I have to turn into Darth Vader with a CPAP, I will do it. Better and, than uh, not breathing. Literally his body will go like, he looks dead. And then his diaphragm like, <gasps> Alright guys, well I said we were going to do something fun before we went to the doctor. We are hanging out here with my good friend Mark, who uh, has these two beautiful, beautiful horses here. Red Arabians. <laughs> this is my seven-year-old, and her mother's right over there. Gorgeous horses. And so we're just hanging out here with them, giving them some exercise, and uh, Mark is uh, the author of a, an awesome book called The Horse Listener. And, uh, I'll link it down in the description. It's a great book, a really awesome book about uh, it's about a journey of a, a man and uh, developing a relationship with a horse, right? Yeah, that not only that is it developing a relationship after it had a bad relationship. <clears throat> in other words, it did it wrong. Uh, I, I did it wrong for so many years, and then having a big epiphany. You know, that epiphany was going from a really strong do it or else type of attitude to something where I totally changed to where now it's a spiritual connection, you know. See, I was a truck driver for many, many years. And once I had a big thing, a big change in my life, um, I was very depressed. And as I came out of that big depression, 
I realized that I had changed that attitude of mine of being really, you know, um, controlling and all that sort of thing. And I had a really special Arabian stallion. He was fabulous. He was from Europe. And he helped me change into uh, the horseman that I am now. I guess I could say that is when you get in touch with these horses, you start listening to them and start of, you know, just really looking at their, um, their body language. You, you see what they're saying. Literally, you feel that. So the book talks about that and how that changed. And also it goes, it goes to where the many times that maybe you might have a, a big uh, problem in your life and you put yourself down. It tells the story about how first the horses learn how to forgive you, and then as a result of that, they teach you how to forgive yourself. And the book goes literally through a friend of mine's experience over to the Middle East, riding out in the desert, getting lost, and then finding the sheik, and then the sheik ultimately gets him with a filly. This filly here is the character for that filly that I was talking about, because she was a gift from someone else also. So my book teaches people how to partner with the horses, and also helps you understand, really, how if you change the way of being, the way that you are with people, the way you are with horses, you communicate just almost instantly. The nature of horses is really important to understand first. And once you understand them, you empathize with them and you become totally different. You don't have to worry about them, you know, submitting to you anymore. You're, you're developing a partnership. They do it because they want to. I've got a website that uh, I have a blog on there. It talks about a really nice articles of, about horsemanship, different uh, ailing of horses and maladies of horses and all that yeah. and experiences I've had. In, what's, in the the, what's the website? What's the website is www.markmhanna.com. Super passionate guy, Mark. I, I met him down in Arizona working with horses uh, at, a, at a boys ranch down there and just had, you know, I was only only there at the same time as him for about four months or something yeah. like that and, and in that, in that <coughs> time you know, I, I, I just fed off of the passion that Mark has for, for horses in general and, and for life. Uh, the book is, is based off of a lot of true stories. So go check out the book. Link is in the description to the website where you can find the book, all of that stuff. Um, we're going to hang out with these girls for another hour or so before we got to go over to the doctor. So there you go. Nice meeting you all. <laughs> Look at you. Look at you. How are you? How you doing, huh? How you doing? I've got a picture of me on this one from, you know, what was that, seven years ago? Something like that, forever ago. Um, and then I hadn't met, hadn't met Cash until just a couple months ago. She's a mare now, was conceived. I was there right at the time of that mare. And all through her gestation, I was able to talk to that baby <laughs> when that baby was born, she basically knew everything.
Hey, you got you got hay on your face. <laughs> well, that was fun. Uh, I'm sure missed those horses, hanging out with horses in general. Um, it's something that I really want to get back into, and hanging out with Mark here in town. It's uh, kind of interesting that he decided to move into Cedar City. Uh, right around the same time as me. So yeah, now we're heading over to the pulmonologist and um, I'm gonna get this sleep apnea thing figured out. Hopefully you had fun with the horses. I know I did. I thought I was gonna get ran over at one point. I was like, ah! It was awesome. They're so cute. They like get all excited when Mark gets excited so he gets them all like jumping around and super fun. Yeah, it was fun being able to get on Kaz again. Um, I haven't ridden her for seven years since, you know, before eight years. It's been eight years, wow. Before Casablanca was even born. So apparently my overnight sleep with the thing on my finger was so bad that she wants me to do a full sleep study. Um, luckily I can do it in home because she wants to find out how accurate that was. <laughs> she suspects that it's relatively accurate, but she wants to double check, so more testing to come. Unfortunately, this process is seeming like it's gonna be a month out before I'm actually starting the treatment for my sleep apnea. Just the way that scheduling is working for the sleep study and all that stuff, so yeah, fun stuff. All right, well, back at the house now, kind of an abrupt ending of the day. I was hoping that the appointment at the doctor, they would just say, yep, this is what we need to do, but apparently more testing is needed, so that's okay. We got home, and then uh, I kind of have been feeling a little bit under the weather, so I've just been taking it easy, but editing this video up now, and uh, figured I'd close this thing out. So hopefully you enjoyed this video. Hit that thumbs up button if you did. Also, subscribe if you haven't. And don't forget to check out the links down in the description to Mark's book, The Horse Listener, and to his website where he has a blog, a bunch of neat information for anybody who's interested in horses, uh, especially Arabian horses. Mark does a lot of horse rescue work as well, and he's just trying to uh, get people back into the art of horsemanship and the under understanding of it and I think this book is a brilliant way of doing that so check it out and uh, yeah till next time take care of yourselves everybody make it a great day peace out